Tonight we will read in the Haggadah, Rabban Gamliel Haya Omer, Kol Shelo Amar Shloshad Zvarim Elu Bapesach, Lo Yatsa Yede Chovato, the Elu Hen. Pesach, Matzah, Umaror. Rabban Gamliel would say, anyone who has not said these three things on Pesach has not fulfilled his obligation. And these are them, the Passover sacrifice, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. Most Haggadot go on and they expound on these three things, usually about a paragraph more. And then we read, Bechol dor vador chayav adam nerot et atzmo ke'iluhu yatsami mitzrayim. In each and every generation, a person is obligated to see himself as if he himself has left Egypt. This year, the most important part of that phrase is the Hebrew word ke'ilu, which means as if or as though. My friends, what we rent through this past year and what we are continuing to go through was not what our ancestors experienced in the book of Exodus thousands of years ago. Yes, this year has been difficult. 2.76 million people have died. Here in Canada, as of yesterday, 22,790 people have died. 126 million people got very sick from this pandemic. People we know, people we love. People have been isolated and many are still isolated. And the Canadian vaccine rollout is not what we desire it to be. But my friends, we are B'nai Chorin. We are not slaves. We must remember that we are, in fact, free people. We're free. Like many others, over the years, I have amassed a modest, maybe not so modest, Haggadah collection. This year, I opened up this Haggadah. It's called From Bondage to Freedom, which was written by Rabbi Tversky Zichrono Livracha, who died earlier this year at age 90 from COVID-19. Rabbi Tversky was a Hasidic rabbi and a psychiatrist who specialized in alcoholism and addiction. He beautifully merged Musar, which is the Jewish ethics and morality movement, with the 12-step program and with ideas from clinical psychology. Rabbi Tversky, too, reminds us that we are obligated to see ourselves as though we have emerged from Egypt. One line that he writes here shook me. It changed my thinking completely. He reminded us that the goal of Pesach is not to compare our contemporary lives with the experiences that our ancestors had in Egypt. What he claims we should do is use our imagination and think about what slavery was like for our ancestors when we get to that line in the Seder. Now, thankfully, we all have vivid imaginations. We can all imagine the first hug that we're going to have with the person that we can't hug right now, 
We can all imagine an indoor Shabbos meal with friends and family who are not in our immediate bubble. And of course, how many of us can imagine what it's like to take a trip to Israel right now on an airplane, right? I imagine all those things all the time. So we have creative imaginations, all of us do. And calling on these vivid imaginations for just a few moments this morning on Shabbat HaGadol, hours before Pesach really begins, I want us to suspend reality and travel back in time per Rabbi Tversky's suggestion. Give your mind permission to create a three-dimensional scene in rich color so we can see ourselves fully participating in these scenes. One is chayav, one is obligated to see oneself in the straw pits of Egypt, clearing the straw mixing it with mud and baking it into bricks under a hot, hot sun. Think of the sweltering heat of a lut in July. That's close to Egypt. One is obligated to hear the scolding of the Egyptian taskmasters. And one is obligated, chayav, to see the whip and feel it as it makes contact with our backs. That's being a slave. One is obligated to visualize the various plagues, animals dying, blood in every water source, hail and fire coming from the sky. All of this at a distance, but being aware of it. And one is obligated, one is chayav, to hear the screams and the pain of the Egyptians. In each and every generation, we are obligated to see ourselves as if we had left Egypt. What was leaving hell like for you? One is obligated to see oneself as part of a throng leaving Egypt, following Moses into a barren wilderness. What does your hero look like? Uh, maybe Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments sometime after the three hour and 20 minute mark? Maybe. And finally, one is chayav, obligated to stand at the edge of the sea of reeds and hear the clumpity clump, clumpity clump, clumpity clump of the chariots approaching. And we're obligated to feel that initial terror and then open our eyes wide in awe as the waters become a choma. As the waters form walls right in front of them, one on the right and one on the left. That one line in the Haggadah informs us that exercising our minds this way is mandatory. We cannot appreciate what we have, and we have so much if we don't go back to recalling what the Israelites did not have. They did not have freedom when they were slaves. And we 
cannot fully appreciate the freedom that we have if bondage is only an abstraction. When you sit down at your table tonight, I encourage you to repeat this exercise that we did this morning. In your mind, go back to remembering what it was like to be a slave in Egypt. Doing that is as important as remembering and expounding on Pesach, Matzah, Umaror. But even more important, tonight, when we get to the Shechianu, the Shechianu at Kadesh, the Shechianu that follows that first cup of wine, belt it out, scream it. Don't just say the words. Really thank God that we made it through this past year to this moment. If you are alive, say that Shechianu with everything you got. Thank God. Thank the Kaddish Baruch Hu for keeping us alive and sustaining us and bringing us to Pesach again this year as free people. No, our lives are not ideal right now. None of them are. But never forget that we are all B'nai Chorim. We are free. We are free. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Kasher V'Sameach.